Hi everybody, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com and today I'd like to talk about getting started with Fusion 360 drawings. We're going to take this part and show you how you can kind of get started with it, give you some of the uh, fundamentals between b behind some of the commands and then you can go ahead and run with your own parts from there. So I have this part on the screen, I'd like to make a drawing of it. And to make a drawing of this file, what I'm going to do is go to the workspaces and choose drawing. We can make a drawing of our designs, or if we create an animation, we can make a drawing of that. I want to create a drawing of our design. I'm going to go ahead and click on that option. Now when I do, Fusion is asking, do you want to do, you want to do everything in the assembly? So if this had a bunch of components in there, we could, we could make uh, an assembly drawing. Or do you just want to do it for an individual part? Now in this case, it won't matter much. But just to show you how it works, I'm going to uncheck the full assembly and tell it I'd like to just make a drawing of this part. Uh, it doesn't really matter if I have this checked or not, I'm going to get the same result. And then we look at the dialog and make some changes. Now I'm going to do a from scratch template, maybe look for a, a template video down the road for me. Under the st standards, we can choose ISO or ASME. I'm going to choose ASME. And under my units, I want inches. And then we can select a sheet size. I'm going to go with a B-sized uh, piece of paper, which is 17 inches by 11 inches. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And when I do, it's going to open up a new window that's going to be our drawing. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And there you can see here pops open a new window, and it shows our title block and some things like that. Now you notice I have a view of the part attached to my mouse. And as I move it around, I can choose different places to, to put it. I want to change my orientation so you can see you have different uh, view orientations you can choose. I want to start out with a front view. And I'd also like to make this part fit my paper a little bit better. So in the scale factor, I'm going to enter a scale factor of 1. Uh, we could even maybe go bigger with that, but we'll just use 1 and go ahead and plop this down. So I'm going to click to place it. And then I have some different options like do I want to just have visible edges or a line drawing with visible and hidden edges? Do I want a shaded or shaded with hidden and visible edges? Um, different other options like that down there. I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. And now you're going to see the view appear on my piece of paper. If I want to move these views around, I can click on a view. And when I do, I see this grip in the center. Clicking on the grip will allow me to move the view around. So that would be the equivalent of creating what's called a base view or a parent view. Now what, I, what I'd like to do is create a projected view or a child view. So I'm going to select a projected view and click on my base view. And now as I move my mouse around, you see that I would get different options depending on where I move it, even isometrically. So I'm going to move it over to the left, and that's going to give me a side view. I'm going to left click to place it. And I can continue to place more views of this as I go. I'm going to right click and choose OK, and it's going to create that left side view for me. It does it at the exact same scale as what the parent view is created and using the same visual style as what the parent view was doing. Now, I can even do things like I could create another projected view of the side view. I'll just move it up into the right. And now you see I get an isometric view when I place that. I'm going to right click and choose OK and I get a isometric projected view. This view is pretty busy with all those hidden lines on there, so let's see if we can clean that up a little bit. I'm gonna double click on this, and I could either choose to turn off all the hidden edges, and when I close this now, you see I get a much cleaner drawing, or I could choose to do a shaded with no hidden edges, and now you see it looks like my 3D model. So creating views like this, pretty simple to do. If we keep working our way across, you see the next option that we have is called a section view. So maybe what I'd like to see is what this thing looks like if we cut it in half. I'm going to click on section view, and I want to know what view do I want to section. I'm going to choose this as the view that I'd like to section. And I'm not clicking on anything yet. Fusion is just trying to pick up on endpoints, midpoints, things like that. There you can see it's picked up on the midpoint. I'm going to start off and left click. I'm going to move through the part and left click again. Now I could create as many steps in this section as I want to. I don't want to create anymore. So I'm going to right click and say continue. And I'm going to move this straight down. Notice that now the arrows are pointing up. And if I move it above the part, the arrows are pointing down. So it understands uh, drawing standards and how things are supposed to look. I'm going to go ahead and left click and place this. 
and then right click and choose OK. And now you'll see we get a section view with a label. We can click on the label and find the grip, move that grip around and adjust things as we need to. Now here's where having a drawing package inside of a solid modeling program is nice because if somebody were to ask me with AutoCAD to draw a section view of a 2D print like that in an isometric, I, there's no, I'd tell them, no, we're not doing that. It's pretty easy to do in something like Fusion. So again, I'm gonna create a projected view of the section view. I'm just gonna drag it up, left click to place it, right click and choose okay. And there you see we have a projected section view. So uh, something that's kind of neat to go ahead and make. Another option that we have is something called a detail view. So if we look at this view right here, there's maybe some detail on here that I'd like to define a little bit better than what I have the space for. So I'm gonna choose a detail view. I'm gonna choose the view that I wanna detail is this, and I'm gonna left click to choose where I want the center of that to be located. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click there. That looks okay. And now you can see I've got a blown up version of that, and I can choose what scale I want that to be. So in this case, that view is two times larger than what the parent view is. Now I can go ahead and left click and place that. Right click and choose OK. And I have a, a detail. I can move that around, move that label around. And the kind of fun part about this is that these are dynamic. So if I were to click on this A and shrink it down, you can see it changes in real time depending on where my, uh, how big my circle is. So we get bigger or smaller areas. And if I really want to reposition that around, I can click on the grip and just drag it and note that the view label moves along with that, with the view as we move it around. So that's, that's covered how to create a base view, a projected view, a section view, and a detail view. Now we also have a, a, you know, a move command and we can rotate the views as we need to. Let's go ahead and add a center line to one of these. So I'm going to choose the center line and wants to know what view I want to add a center line to. I'm going to choose, I'm going to, do it on this view by clicking this horizontal line and this horizontal line and now a center line bisector appears. It's not nearly long enough so I'm just going to click on the edges and drag that out. Click on it again, drag this out the other way. Now I have a center line that runs through the center of the part. Uh, we can do other things like center marks. So let's do a center mark pattern. It might look like all six of these holes are on the same diameter, but I know that they're slightly off. So I'm going to choose this hole, this hole, and that hole right there. I'm going to right click and choose OK. And there's a center pattern. Now, if I undid that, I went a little too quick. I'm going to do the center pattern mark again and choose that hole, that hole, and that hole. Now you can see as it's found the center, I can also say I'd like to add a center mark to that. Go ahead and click OK. And there I've got a centered, I could dimension this as a bull hole diameter now. And uh, we know that everything's coming off of that center point. Adding dimensions is much like adding dimensions to a sketch. This is a smart dimension command, so it should theoretically understand what kind of dimension you're trying to add. So I'm going to start the dimension command. And uh, at first, I'm going to dimension from this point down to that point. I drag it over, and there you can see we get a dimension of 1.36. I'm going to, while I'm still in the command, I'm going to click on this edge, this radius. You can tell me it gives me a radius of, one point, uh, of uh, 0.14. And if I find a circle on here, such as this one right there, you can see when I click on a circle itself, it gives me a diameter dimension. So depending on the thing that I'm clicking on, it's going to change uh, the dimension type that it gives me. If I hit the dimension command drop down, you can see that there's explicit dimension types. If something isn't picking up right, I can just go ahead and click on those dimension types right there. Coming across, we can add text. So I'm going to start the text command and just drag out a text box and place that and type in the text that I want. When I'm ready to enter it, um, I just left click out of the box and I get the text on my drawing. If I want to edit it, I put my mouse over the top of it and double click on it and it brings back the dialog box. Here you can see I can change the font or the size or different characteristics about it. I can even add things like fonts. So, if, or I'm sorry, symbols. So if I came up here and added a di diameter dimension, I could you know do stuff like that rather than remembering some of the certain commands that, that pop those in. 
Uh, for instance, if you're an AutoCAD user, you might remember that percent percent %c will also give you a diameter command. I'm going to left click to get out of there, and there's some of the text. We can do leaders, and the good news is the leaders work almost identically to how the text works. So I'm going to choose the leader command, and I'm going to go, maybe I'll say something about this hole. I'm going to place it, and I'm going to call this a through hole, something like that. Left click outside the box, and there we have some text placed in our drawing. You have a uh, other symbols that we can add. So we can do some geometric dimension intolerancing, a datum identifier. We can add parts tables or other tables to our, um, to our drawing. And if we have an assembly, we can balloon the different parts. When you're done, you can output this to a PDF or let's see if it's been added in the last update. We can also go to the file menu and choose print. This was something that was just recently introduced in, inside of Fusion 360. You might also notice that my title block is somewhat populated. It's the project that I pulled this part from was Kevin's first project. The title is called Intro to 2X Turning. Uh, I added a date and a scale and things like that on there. And if I want to go and add more information, I can double click on the text that pops up a title block editor and I can come in and add anything to these different fields that I want to. So for instance, let's find the drawing number and let's type in one, two, three, four, five and click OK. And now you can see the drawing number field is filled out. Fusion 360 drawings um, aren't my favorite part of the product. Uh, the team is making it better constantly. I wish that they would make it better faster. Uh, luckily, you know, drawings, it all seems to come down to we always need drawings, but drawings are becoming less important as we're starting to work more and more with the 3D model. Uh, I guess there's a couple more things I could show you. If we wanted to add a new page, I can hit the plus down here and that adds a new page to my drawing where I could do, you know, put different views or different component views on here, whatever I want to do. And I can change some of the settings down here. So for instance, um, maybe for my linear unit format, I'd like to have decimal instead of, or fraction instead of decimal or, or whatever. Hopefully we get even more control of how to do this. It's kind of an all or nothing right now. We can either have decimals or we can have fractions, but I couldn't have a fraction hole and a decimal hole in the same drawing. Um, so there's work for the team to do. The good news is they seem to be improving drawings with every release. I hope that gives you enough information to get started with Fusion 360 drawings. And if you need any other information or have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. Thanks for watching the video.